Dear ladies and gentlemen, I would be more than happy not to present this presentation, uh, but still uh, Balkan floods happen and I have to give some dates on this. So the idea is to show what shall we do after this. You know, a Balkan area is at the southeast of the Europe. Uh, it covers uh, a number of countries within the Danube River Basin, but also within the Sava River Basin. This flood affected three countries, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, and Serbia. Uh, there was a specific meteorological situation in five days in May 2014. Uh, here it's written because I'm not a meteorologist, I cannot, but I can say that uh, this uh, is a usual situation in Balkans that low pressure area forms over Adriatic Sea and goes to the Black Sea. But in this occasion, it didn't pass slowly or quickly as usual, but it stayed for a few days over this area, and we had extremely heavy and continuous rains over whole river basins. <clears throat> Here you can see uh, that in three days, we had over 300 millimeters of rain, it means it is larger than one in thousand years rain. These are maps of Bosnia and Herzegovina on the left and Serbia on the right, where in blue are uh, these areas that were affected the most. Uh, this meteorological situation <coughs> led to uh, extreme hydrological situation. Because uh, we had many uh, rain epi rainfall episodes before this one in April and May, and the soil was already saturated. So uh, combined with this extreme rainfall, there were some really amazing hydrological events. On national smaller rivers, uh, like torrents, we had extremely high flow velocities, massive sediment movement, and also many landslides. On small and medium rivers, uh, these were exceptional floods. On small and medium rivers, we have somewhere flood protection system, but it failed on many locations, leading to high damages. On this, slide, on this <coughs> diagram, you can see that during only one day, the, the water level raised for eight meters. Uh, I must say that we had a red alert, that we expected uh, that the meteorological and hydrological situation will be extremely heavy, but uh, nobody expect, expected 300 millimeters. We expected 100 and also very, very difficult situation. Also, I must say that on the international Sava River, which flows through uh, four countries, uh, there were some extremely uh, dangerous situation because uh, all the right tributaries uh, from Croatia and Bosnia, Herzegovina and also Serbia had very, very uh, high flows and it uh, went downstream till the mouth of the Sava to Danube in Belgrade. Uh, this is only the sketch of the Sava River Basin and also the Serbia because we had in Serbia uh, these, are, these orange areas. We also had floods uh, not only in the Sava River Basin. In, in Sava River Basin, these areas which are red were uh, really badly affected uh, sub-basins by this flood. The consequences were really amazing. In Serbia, 1.6 million people was affected. 32,000 were evacuated. We had many casualties, 51. 
damage was uh, extremely high if you combine it with losses. This is 1.5 billion euros. The cause of all these are torrents, landslides, levee breaches on many, many places. The situation was also very, very heavy in Bosnia and Herzegovina. They affected 1 million people, evacuated 90,000 casualties, 25 damaged 2 billion euros. The cause of all these events was really the same. In Croatia, they also uh, had problems, but due to Levy Bridge along uh, the left uh, bank of the Sava River, but still they affected 38,000 people, evacuated 15,000, also three casualties, and damaged <coughs> something like 300 million euros. These are... Uh, <coughs> some data on the, our problems in Serbia. So in 24 municipalities, uh, we had uh, in million euros many damages. The biggest was in mining and energy sector. I will explain it to you later. The next one was the housing. So many houses were destroyed and many people are homeless now. So we started a recovery process. So the government of Serbia initiated a new law on post-flood rehabilitation with three national programs for damaged houses, water facilities, transport network. And now we are starting the recovery and also waiting for help for, from international uh, society uh, because we had a donor conference in July. I will not speak about that, but uh, that in uh, water management strategy that will be ready till the end of two, uh, 2014, we will include new flood management measures that are lessons learned from this disaster. I will now present only uh, the messages from one river basin in Serbia. Its name is Kolubara. This is the most downstream tributary of the Sava, the nearest to the mouth of the Danube, uh, which is 20 south, 27 kilometers downstream. This basin is less than 4,000 square kilometers. But it is very difficult because it has a fan shape and very dense hydrological network with, more, with, with 15 tributaries larger than 100 square kilometer. It covers 16 municipalities and the flood protection is uh, <coughs> made only in some parts where we have towns, and something that is worth uh, for protection. So it is not heavily modified. It is still as much natural is, as it can be since it is uh, so near the <coughs> capital of Serbia. Uh, I will present here uh, the, the problems and consequences which happened in these three uh, areas, so at the, the the upper part of the of the basin in the middle part and on the most most downstream part near the mouth uh, this is the list of all stakeholders which were affected in this river basin by the floods so many ministries industry the mining basin of, of kolubara which is very important for Serbia because it produces 50% of total energy. Uh, there are several countries and 16 munic municipalities. But this is some uh, problem which is uh, for us very big. Uh, we have two public water management companies in this river basin, which is not good for us. So this is the, the way that we shall, uh, we, we must change that. And also there are not nature protection sites, agriculture, tourism, many NGOs. And I must not forget public utility companies 
and uh, like water supply and sewage, sanitation, roads, and so on. The flood on Kurubara, which was measured on this red point in the middle of, of this river basin, was had the return period of 1,000 year. So uh, in cubic meters, it was uh, more than 900 cubic meters, but it is upstream of the all damages that happened uh, on this river basin. So at the upstream part, the, the Kolubara uh, in this valley of a city uh, emerges for, from two small streams and it is heavily modified through the city. It has uh, re really str strong uh, flood protection, but this flood protection didn't sustain these high velocities and it was damaged. Also, all bridges fell down in this area, both on local and regional roads. On the middle part of Kulubara, we have the open pit coal mines. These coal mines are for very important, as I said, for the production of, of power. But it happened that the Kulubara break through the levee that protected these uh, mines, and it filled with water and mud. So uh, the total quantity of water is, and mud is 200 million cubic meters, meaning that it is almost 200 small reservoirs. You know that uh, according to I called cr criteria, small reservoirs are less than one million cubic meters. And the damage was extremely high. Now they are pumping out this water, but all these machines uh, are destroyed because they are a long time underwater. But still, even if water went into these open uh, mines and 200 million cubic meters were stored, we had a catastrophe on the most downstream part of Kolubara. Uh, the levee, uh, this is the Obrenova city, uh, the area which is surrounded by three rivers. On the north is the Sava River, on the east is Kolubara, and on the south is Tamnava. So the, lake, uh, the levees broke on, uh, <coughs> on the Kolubara and Tamnava, those are these blue arrows, and the water entered the city. The water level was very high, over five meters, and it went up till the levees along Sava were not break, and then the water went out. Those are these uh, green arrows. What happened there was really a disaster. 80% of this uh, municipality was flooded. Water that was very, very high, so m many people died, although uh, 25,000 were evacuated. 1,000 houses were partially or totally devastated. The damage to transport and communications was very high, but also the thermal power, uh, power plant, Nikola Tesla, the largest in Serbia, was endangered. So, uh, what did we learn from this flood? First of all, you cannot protect everybody, you cannot protect everything. Uh, we must think about what might happen if these climate projections are our future. So, I think that the best thing is to relocate buildings from flood way or to implement only local flood protection measures uh, to leave the space for this uh, water. The, the, one of the biggest problems are in crossings across the river, so rail, roads or railroads. These bridges are often obstacles in the floodway. They must be modified. 
Uh, the existing wetlands or inundated areas must be sustained, so no more new levees. Uh, if possible, or where possible, we should restore also national reten uh, natural retention areas uh, and build new flood retention capacities on, on smaller rivers, on the head of, of their basins, but also along large rivers like Sava, we should construct dry polders or uh, because uh, you cannot manage these extreme floods when they are coming from such a large river basin as Sava or Danube. And also uh, the sediment management is very important, so we, mu we must sustain forests and a forest hilly and mountain regions. In Kolubara, we, uh, we have only 20% forests of all uh, the area, so uh, this area should be afforested more. Uh, concerning the flood management or river management, the, the flood protection level of the most important areas should be upgraded. Uh, we learned that uh, because we had to build additional flood walls from sandbags along the Sava, where the main cities are in Serbia. Now we should, uh, we cannot upgrade these uh, permanent structures, but we can use mobile protection walls. Also, the role of the existing reservoirs and retention is very important, so they must be operated so to retain these flood waters. This is the number one use of them. All, all other uses are less important. Then, uh, all uh, erosion control and flood protection structures should be permanently monitored and inspected, inspected because in, in, during these extreme floods, they can fail on any place due to some uh, <laughs> unexpected or less important things like a tree or something like that. Also, these torrents, uh, torrential rivers in Bosnia and Serbia, they are very, very dangerous. They should be permanently monitored and some cleaning maybe of the river beds is needed. Uh, this is also one of the sediment management measures which are very important in these hilly and mountain areas. Uh, concerning the policy development and implementation, we need a very efficient bilateral and international cooperation. Uh, till these days, uh, we are very, uh, very good uh, relationships within the SAVA Commission and also ICPDR, but we lack the bilateral cooperation with neighboring countries. Uh, we, we, because with them we can uh, make some common actions during the, the flood defense. Uh, then very important thing is to implement uh, results of flood hazard and flood risk mapping into special plans because I was astonished that in Obrenova city, which was catastrophically flooded, a uh, special plan was produced a year before this flood, and the flood hazard and risk was not mentioned at all. So they were not aware that uh, they are endangered. Uh, the problem is how to increase, how, how to limit the increase of flood risk in the actually or potentially flooded areas. Uh, this should be done through special conditions and permits. You know, when this flood happened, uh, many people which were flooded and uh, uh, said that they came recently from other countries on Balkans and they made their houses uh, near rivers, not knowing that they are endangered. So this is uh, the problem that should be 
better managed in, in, in the future. Also, the erosion-prone areas are, are very vulnerable. They should be designated, and the conditions of their use uh, would be very stringent. And also, I think that uh, uh, flood-resilient construction is very important for the future. Uh, so stakeholders, all kind of stakeholders should be involved in flood management. It includes the improvement of system of hydrometeorological monitoring, forecast, early warning, and real-time issuing of these data to relevant services. The upgrade of international exchange of, of data, so we had uh, problems during this flood because uh, no data, there was some, were some data, but it was not enough, so we had to, to call friends, to ask, to, so this should be very <coughs> good system to have all data in time. Also, these alarm systems and uh, warning to population should be managed good because we have some alarm systems, but they didn't work in that time, or, or people didn't believe that they are hearing the alarm. They didn't want to move from, uh, they had time to move from these areas which were flooded, but they didn't understand that they have only an hour or two to go. Uh, also very important is to strengthen the capacity of professionals and institutions because people forget. We didn't have such floods for 20 or 30 years, so uh, these new generations didn't, don't have the capacity to, to understand and to manage these situations. And also, I think that we should prepare plans for protection and rescue in emergency situations on all levels, on state level, municipality level, and so on. And we should imagine the most extreme situations and then make plans for this because it is very cheap and paper can uh, hold anything. Also, uh, training exercises for all municipalities and people in flood-prone areas. And that's all for me. If you have any questions, 